Hello everybody and welcome to my comic review. I am Rainbow Red Panda and today I'm reviewing the two-part series of The Fall of the House of Usher, which was originally by Edgar Allan Poe. It was a short story that he wrote many, many years ago. And it, the comic version is an adaptation by Richard Corbin, who was also an, Eis an Eisner Hall of Fame inductee. So that that's exciting also. Um, and I'm a huge Edgar Allan Poe fan. Um, a lot of people are in this area. Hoping that you guys are as well, but I guess you don't have to be. Um, this comic series is not exactly, it's not definitely not word for word of Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. Um, it mainly focuses on the relationship that Roderick Usher has with his sister Madeline and sort of what takes place there. Um, it doesn't really go into necessarily his illness and how he's paranoid and thinks that the house is, you know, sort of alive and all of that. It, it doesn't really go into that at all. So, um, it kind of, on the basis, Alan gets this letter to go visit his friend Roderick, who he hasn't seen in many, many years. Um, he goes there, he doesn't really know what he's supposed to be expecting. Um, he gets there, it's, you know, this dark, gloomy, crazy looking area. His horse gets scared after seeing um, the horse, the corpse of another horse, and runs away. So he is left on foot to go to this this house of Usher. Um, he gets there. He sees all of these these random corpses and tombs and things. Um, he ends up like passing out and waking up in a bed. Um, he finds Roderick. Roderick tells him, you know, oh, I'm working on my art. You know, all of this is here. It's been raining. The weather's been really crappy. So you know. All of this stuff has come up, so we have to wait until the weather gets better before we can, you know, make everything better. So he shows him his artwork, and of course his art is the subject of his sister, his twin sister, Madeline. Um, it's kind of an inappropriate situation, I don't know, I mean, having your sister do like nude modeling for you so that you can do art forms just seems a little strange to me. Um, he kind of suspects, Alan kind of suspects that something's not quite right, Madeline is a little weird herself. She's kind of standoffish. She's not really embracing her brothers doing this. She has her own little things. Um, and so, I don't know, he just, he thinks something isn't quite right there. Um, he goes on later, Madeline comes to him, gives him this letter saying, oh, my brother is going to kill me. Like, you have to put a stop to this, all of this. And he just kind of, he tries to help her. Like, he kind of says something to Roderick about it. And Roderick's just like, oh no, you know, everything's fine. And finally, Roderick finishes his master art, which is, of course, a portrait of his sister. It's very lifelike. I mean, her eyes, everything. It's it's very detailed. It's very lifelike. Um, as soon as the portrait is done, Madeline dies. It's very tragic. Um, they take her to the basement where she is to be entombed until the weather, in the story it is so until the weather is good enough for him to properly bury her. In the Poe thing it is a little bit different. Um, it is just so that she can be in there for two weeks before actually burying her. It's just part of the, the ritual that Roderick wanted. Um, but here it is just so that he, until he can bury her because the ground is too wet and all of that. So I just had a bird fly into my window kind of random while reading an Edgar Allan Poe thing about crows and things. So yes, that just happened. Um, so Alan kind of thinks that something is not quite right here. Um, Madeline looks alive and her, her brother just has a very inappropriate relationship. Like before they like close the tomb and lock it and everything, he like kind of feels her up and it's, it's very strange. It's a very strange relationship to have with your sister. Also, his Grandmother is also in the basement shackled to a wall. It's her just her body. She's been dead for a while But I guess she was the painting subject of his before Madeline, so He's kind of concerned about that. He goes over the notes Finds Madeline's note that he gave her she gave him and um, turns it over It's like my brother is going to kill me if you want to fix this, you know destroy the painting basically what has happened is her soul is in this painting, and it's it's almost kind of like a Harry Potter type painting. Like, if you've watched the Harry Potter movies or read the books, like, their paintings are, like, life, like, they move, they talk, all of this. Well, he walks in to Roderick's room, and Roderick is 
kind of having his way with his sister's painting like the clothing moves on it and things it's very it's very inappropriate like you don't want to walk into like a brother making out and like groping his sister's painting body thing it's 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 very strange and very inappropriate um he confronts usher at this point usher's very like no this is fine this is my sister like we love each other all of this stuff um he Alan ends up going down to the tomb to find Madeline's body. Um, she has clawed her way out of the tomb and is kind of standing in the doorway, dead. Um, he goes up and destroys the painting. She kind of comes back alive long enough to kind of take her brother and they, the house just kind of collapses. Alan is included, everyone just kind of collapses and you just presume that everyone's dead in the end. Um, in the end, Alan does resurface, um, the narrator talks about it. The, Alan resurfaces and is reunited with his horse that ran away and they kind of, I don't know, trot off into better, better pastures. Um, could kind of be a metaphor for the, you know, they both died together, but I don't know, take it as you will. So that's kind of the fall of the House of Usher. I don't know, the, the artwork in it is kind of interesting. I do, I do like it. Usher is, the noses on these people, man. It's, it's not a fun time. They definitely are in need of some some assistance here. Um, here's Usher with the glasses. He kind of he almost looks like a singer from the old days with those glasses. And then you have Madeline. It's kind of an inappropriate picture, but you have Madeline, his sister. She has like a crazy nose on her as well. You can tell they're twins. They have matching weird noses. And I don't know. That's just kind of it. I mean, you have like the butler, and they have like all these like random things, but I mean, it is, you have to think, if Edgar Allan Poe was around today, the kind of comics and the kind of work that he could create would be amazing. Like, he's just one of those authors, like, he's timeless, he's classic, it's, his stuff will always be around, whether it's someone else writing it into comic form or whatever, so many artists have been influenced by him and his work, like, he's kind of like one of the first, like, horror type of artists that's been around, and I don't know, like, I'm, I'm so excited that they did this into a comic. There's so many other ways that you could go with any of his works. And, I don't know, I just really like it. It kind of keeps to the thing, I mean, Crow, the Raven, and all of that. It's kind of synonymous with Poe, and it's, he makes a, the birds kind of make a, a thing. Like, there's, there's an owl. Like, there's birds all throughout this. Um, but I don't know, I mean, the Crow doesn't really have anything to do with this, but, I mean, you just think of, Edgar Allan Poe, and it just kind of associates. So, I don't know, that's like my little review on the House of the Fall of the House of Usher. I would recommend it highly, especially if you are a Poe fan. It doesn't follow it, you know, word for word, so it's kind of like an interpretation. So, you know, don't, don't hate Richard Corbin. You just, I mean, you can't make the entire thing into a comic. It would be like a ten-part series, which would be fine. I would have been fine reading it, but I just kind of like how it, it takes the main focus on one of the messed up parts of of the story and just kind of fo focuses on that so I mean that's that's cool that's fine like that's that's his interpretation and that's what stood out to him and that's what he made a comic of so you know you can't you take like two great people and you put them together and this is what you get so that's all I have for this review I hope that you enjoyed it if you did be sure to rate it thumbs up um you can leave a comment let me know what you think about the comic or Edgar Allan Poe or I don't know the random bird that flew into my window while I was doing this um I hope it's okay um and, I don't know, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, I'm also on Facebook and Twitter with the links posted below for that if you guys are interested in following me. And that's all I have for this review. I will see you guys next time. Bye!